welcome to this new channel on R for the purposes of DH or Digital Humanities. If you're familiar with my work, then you know that I have another channel on Python for the Digital Humanities. This other channel, this one here, is meant to teach you R and all the different ways in which we can employ the language of R and use it to really kind of improve an existing DH project or use it to start an existing uh, a new DH project from scratch. If you stick with me through the course of this series, you're going to really learn all the ins and outs of R, how to use it, why it's useful. Uh, you're going to learn about kind of data cultivation in part two of this series, uh, the basic data structures, types of data, qualitative versus quantitative. Uh, then you're going to start learning in part three, really kind of how to do the basic stuff that you have to know in order to really harness the power of R. And then we're going to get into the manipulation of data in part four. And finally, in part five, kind of showing you how to take all of these skills that you developed in the first few parts and apply it to uh, concrete uh, examples that you would use in a, in a DH project. In this video, though, I want to just kind of talk about why use R. What is R? R is a programming language. If you're familiar with Python, it's going to be kind of used in tandem with it. Python and R are both the languages of data science and statistics. R is much more geared towards the statistics end of that, and it's more geared towards simple streamlined code that is meant to solve a data visualization or a data uh, manipulation purpose. It is not meant, and nor is it intended to be used as, a full stack uh, programming language like Python meaning that you're not going to be able to do a whole bunch of uh, front-end web development like you can in Python. That's not the purpose of R. R is not meant to be used like a normal programming language. And because of that, it's got some oddities. It has weird syntax, which we're going to encounter in the series. It also has certain peculiarities and limitations. And we're going to address all of that as we kind of go through. But if I'm talking a lot about these limitations, then this raises a really fundamental question. Why should you consider using R? What is the point? If you already know Python, why bother with R? The reason is because you can accomplish really high-end tasks uh, for statistical analysis in a DH project, such as hierarchical clustering, in about five lines of code, whereas the same task in Python would probably take about 30 to 100 lines of code to achieve. It's much more complicated in Python. R was designed to be really kind of streamlined, quick code to perform targeted statistics-based tasks. So I encourage people to use Python and R in tandem. Use Python to do your kind of data manipulation, your restructuring of data, and all that stuff. Use Python to do a lot of the back-end development. Use Python to do front-end development, or even just use JavaScript, whatever you want to do. But use R to pop out really nice, good quality uh, data visualizations, and use R to really get concrete data that can be presented in some kind of uh, print or visual form. And again, if you stick with me through this series, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. R has at its core the ability to produce high-end graphics or clear graphics very, very quickly. And more importantly, and, and we're going to see this when we get to really kind of part three, one of the things that R can do that Python can't do is it can make certain presumptions about data and automatically structure it for you when you import it as a data frame. Again, we're going to get to all that in part three. But these are some of the reasons why you should consider using R. And if you're not a believer yet, just listen to me through the next really kind of 20 or so videos. And I promise you, by the time you're done, you're going to realize the power of R and why you should consider learning it and making it part of your repertoire and part of your tool set for any DH project that you're doing or any DH project that you intend to do. So stick with me for these next few videos and we're going to get through R. And by the time you're done, you'll be able to kind of work with R and create your own actual programs in it. In the next video, we're going to look at how to install R and we're going to learn to install what I'm using right here, which is R Studio. And throughout this series, I'm going to talk about this more in part three. We're going to be using a data set that I've cultivated on letters from the ninth century from a man named Alcuin. If you're familiar with my work, then you know that I'm a huge fan of Alcuin. I'm a medievalist by trade, but it doesn't matter if you don't know anything about medieval uh, history. 
you're going to be able to use this data set the exact same. All it is is it's a data set that addresses uh, a collection of letters. Uh, so there's about 300 of these letters, and then it'll tell you which manuscripts in which they appear, the recipients of those letters, and the people mentioned in those letters. So basically four kind of types of metadata. We're going to get to all that, though, in a later video, but stick with me and you'll have some fun with R2. If you've liked this video, please like and subscribe down below.